YouTube. It's your God, not your average trucker. Coming to you again with another video, man. Today is uh, Monday, January 14th, 2019. I'm out here at a dock. I'm down here in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, delivering a load that I seem to do in a lot of these videos, man. A load of uh, Pepsi products down here to the Pepsi uh, Pepsi uh, distributor down here in Columbia, right off of um, I twenty. But anyway, man, I just want to drop a quick video, man. We're a couple days starting with Sunday. You know, I'm out. Uh, you know, my wife is a nurse. Uh, she works in the neuro ICU. Uh, she's a critical care nurse. Um, she only works a couple weekends a month, you know, because I don't want to work at all, but you know how women are, man. Women want to feel like they have their own independence. So anyway, she works a couple weekends a month or whatever. And um, so Saturdays and Sundays, for the most part, I'm kicking it with my kids, you know. Uh, my daughter's in college, so most Saturdays I'm kicking it with my uh, my nine-year-old and my two-year-old. And on most Sundays, you know, we go get pancakes, you know. So uh, yesterday, I decided to go to Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake, you know, I don't know if Steak and Shake is everywhere, but their pancakes are the bomb. You know, I know they're a fast food chain. But it's not like getting some rubbery McDonald's pancakes and it's not like getting some Burger King or, you know, not like a fast food chain. Like you eat some steak and shake pancakes, it almost tastes like Cracker Barrel or something. Like they're delicious. But anyway, I pull up in the drive-thru, um, order my, you know, my pancakes for myself and my kids. You know, it's like pancakes, scrambled eggs, and, uh, you know, they're like a combo or something. I don't know. But anyway, I order it. Ladies like, all right, you know, I pay for it. Ladies like, pull up to the front, and you know, I bring it out to you. Bet. So I leave the drive-through window. There's a, uh, you know, the drive-through window is here. I go up. Then I make a left to go around the corner so I can be in the front of the building. But as soon as you make that left, there's somebody sitting there with an old ass, you know. I apologize to people out there with old, you know, hoopties, but the chick, she's sitting up there. She got like a 2001 Cadillac Escalade. You know, this is 2019 now, so she's in an 18-year-old SUV with rims on and everything. You know, do you? But I pull around her. I'm mad because she's at the edge like that. It's like she's obviously waiting on her food, too, waiting on them to bring her food out. Why didn't she pull all the way to the front? It's beyond me. So I go all the way around her. I park my car the very front of the curb. The distance between myself and that lady is about 15, 20 feet. Put my car in park. I got my kid in the back seat. My two-year-old son is in the back seat. I'm sitting there chilling, waiting on them to bring my food out, you know. I see the lady come out the door with uh, uh you know a food in her hand so you know i'm looking in the mirror i see she not going to me she going to the car behind me you know it's all good they was there before me anyway so i watch her hand the lady her food lady has a cigarette in one hand phone in the other she's you know getting her food like this she's looking at her phone got the cigarette put it in her mouth you know I'm looking at her through the mirror. I look back down at my phone. I'm, coincidentally, I might have been watching YouTube. Next thing I know, I hear, <laughs> I'm moving like this. And I'm like, what? I look back. This stupid chick hit me in the back, backed up, hit me again. I jump out the car. I'm like, yo, what the hell are you doing? I got a baby in the back seat. She's like, it's stuck. It's stuck. What stuck? No idea what the hell she's talking about. Because, like I say, it was 15, 20 feet between us. First thing you do when you about to pull out is, you know, you turn your damn wheel. Like, why is your wheel straight facing that way? Like, 
If she didn't hit me, she was going to hit a parked car. Like, the exit is to the right. Needless to say, this silly broad, you know, no disrespect to the women, but she was one of them. Uh, I don't want to be disrespectful. I'm going to just let it ride. But no disrespect to, to, to female drivers, but I have no idea how, how she hit me, not once, but twice. She's in a 2001 Cadillac Escalade. I'm in a 2016 BMW 750 Li. My car's worth a gazillion times more than her old ass car. So I'm mad about that. I'm mad that my baby has been, you know, we impacted. I get out. I'm checking on my son, make sure he cool. People inside the restaurant saw the whole thing. They done called the police. The police was there lickety split. Ambulance show up. So I got my baby in my hand. I'm taking a picture of my damages. I took a picture of the lady's, uh, you know, license plate, but I didn't get to actually exchange information with the lady because the people, the, M the EMS is like, yo, we want to check you and your baby out, get in the back of this ambulance. So I get in the back of the ambulance. They checking me and my kid out. Everything appears to be fine for the moment. I get out of the back of the ambulance and the chick that hit me is gone. I don't know her name. I didn't get to get her insurance information, which is the first two things you do with an accident. The cop is telling me, uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to put it in my report and it'll be online in 24 to 48 hours. I was like, sir, in 24 to 48 hours, like I need to get this claim process rolling because we had, you know, could possibly have an injury. My son's two years old. He barely talks. So I don't know if his back hurt, his neck hurt. Yeah, he was in a car seat. I mean, I don't even know her name, sir. He's like, don't worry, it'll be on a police report. By the way, her license is suspended. I said, what? Where is she now? He's like, well, because the, the chick had on like a Walmart vest. And there's a Walmart less than a mile away from where we are. You know, I don't know if y'all familiar with the area. But I'm at this Steak and Shake near Concord Mills Mall in Concord, North Carolina. Which is, you know, right outside of Charlotte. That's where that NASCAR crap is in Concord. But anyway, there's a Walmart. It's like walking distance from where you are. It's less than a mile away. But he ran a license. A license is suspended. She was just involved in an accident in a parking lot, which shows that she shouldn't be driving anyway. And you didn't allow us to exchange information. I don't know nothing about this lady. Nothing. He took my ID after the fact. She's long gone. So I was, I spent my whole Sunday pissed off because a lot of things rushing through my mind. I'm like, well, if her license is suspended, chances are she don't have no insurance. Right? If her license is suspended, why is she still allowed to drive? You know, I you know, I I'm boggled by this. You know, so I call one of my friends, his wife is an attorney, I'm talking to her. She's like, well, that's at the cop, the officer's discretion, whether or not to, you know, arrest her, but maybe he'll cite, he'll give her a citation, you know, in his police report. But I'm like, what do I do at this point? All I got is her license plate, which that vehicle may or may not belong to her. Or, you know, it's a lot of people out here riding with phony plates. Like, why was the cop so eager to let her go? I wasn't even in the back of the ambulance 10 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. And in that amount of time, the cops let her go. Y'all got her story that quick and just deuces, let her go. So I'm furious. More so that I'm in a car and I get hit by somebody. I'm parked in a parking lot, P. Like, I'm parked in the parking lot. And it's so freaking annoying. And to get hit by somebody that's in a hoopty is even worse. Like, no disrespect, man. I get it, man. Everybody is not fortunate. Everybody don't have money. I understand that. I'm not a materialistic dude. I'm not trying to sound like a clown. But if you in a nice ride, and somebody that hits you is in a piece of crap ride, you will feel me. You will feel me. Because my bumper, you know, my bumper on that car has several sensors on the back those are all you know on the right side they're damaged 
Uh, I have a black vehicle. My car is black. Hers is red. Her red paint is all on my bumper. Bumper's still intact. You know, the car was drivable, but my sensors is going off like crazy. And it's just annoying because I'm like, yo, that car she's in, yeah, in 2001, that was a dope ass, you know, dope ride with Escalade. You know, people was in them Escalades on 22 inch rims back back in the day, and that's what she got now. It look, looked like her car is from Back to the Future, you heard? Like, it looked like whoever had that, whoever owned it in 2001, rimmed it up and all that. And it's probably, she's probably like the 10th owner. I mean, we talking 18 years. I just hope she got insurance, one. Two, like, what are you doing, man? We in a parking lot. You 20 feet from me. What, how, did, how did you even hit me? Not once, but twice. You backed up, hit me again. Like, what the? Was you trying to, like, I don't, I never could understand what the next human's thinking, so I don't even try. But I'm just no way. And then, to make my next day, today, even more beautiful, I jump in my truck at about 4.30 a.m. I'm, you know. Got things to do as always. Jump in my truck. Jump on 77 South. Heading from Charlotte to Columbia. Coincidentally, I was coming here. Um, you know, I had to come here twice today. Everything's good. I'm already pissed because Friday, I told y'all in the previous video, I had a truck that I got out the shop on Thursday. That sucker broke down. And it's, you know, at another shop being looked at. They can't figure out what the problem is. So, I'm already pissed pissed about that you know waiting for you know today's monday they close the weekend they say my truck will be the first one to get looked at so i'm already thinking about that like what's going on already spent four grand on that on that truck on freaking thursday here it is monday how much more is it gonna cost me you know what i mean so i'm thinking about that i'm riding i'm already half sleep because it's you know monday morning didn't get much sleep last night I'm driving. I don't even have music on or nothing. Like early in the morning, I just zone out because I listen to satellite radio, but it's nothing live at that time. You know, I normally ride around listening to NFL Network or maybe Fox Sports, you know, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. But none of that's popping off at 4 30 in the morning. You know what I mean? So rather than listen to whack ass music, because I'm an old man, I can't rock with none of this current, this current rap is just trash. And, you know, it is what it is. But last thing I know, my battery light pops up on my day cab. I'm like, what? And my, my voltmeter is going from, you know, I was at like 14.2 or something while I was driving. Number just going down, down, down. Do, 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 do. And I'm like, first thought, I must have popped my belt. You know, my belt to my alternator must be popped, right? So at this point, I'm like 36 miles away from my delivery and down here this uh this pepsi down here in columbia south carolina right across the street is a ta truck stop and you know needless to say i i know i'm running off my batteries at the moment however i also know that it's four something in the morning it was probably five at this time pulling over and waiting for roadside assistance is not a good look at five in the morning man and i won't about to have no parts of that you understand so I'm pissed off just looking at my voltmeter the whole 30-something miles that I'm driving to get to my spot. I get there, I check in, back my trailer into a dock, drop it, pop the hood, sure enough, my belt to my alternator is popped. And, you know, I'm looking at my voltmeter. I'm at like 11.9 volts. So I called the TA. I'm like, look, man, I need y'all to, you know, replace one of my belts. Y'all got any Volvo belts? Answers, no. I know I didn't have a, I keep spares in my, my Volvo sleepers, but I ain't got none in, in this day cab. And I'm about 15 miles from a Volvo dealer, which is where they would have to go anyway. Truck's already running. I'm like, listen, man, I'm going to go get this, uh, this belt. You know, how much of a, a delay do y'all have right now? Is it like a lot of trucks waiting? Because, you know, them TAs, one of them shops, uh, them TA shops, them mechanics, I don't really trust them. But a belt, you know, a caveman could put a belt on, you know. So I drive, you know, it took me about 20 minutes 
to get the Volvo that just opened, because they open at um, 7 o'clock. I get the Volvo. I buy a freaking uh, belt. It's 9 bucks. But in passing the Volvo, I notice that there's a Petro. So I'm calling Petro like, yo, man, y'all, you know, what's the delay like right now? Same thing I said to T.A. Chick, chick was like, man, you know, only have one tech here. And it's, um, you know, he's not doing anything. You can come right in. It's like, bet. So I buy this freaking um, part at Volvo. And the only reason I didn't let Volvo in Columbia, South Carolina do it is Shealy Volvo. I do not like those guys. They are slow. I mean, you could, your truck will sit there two weeks waiting on it, waiting on them to just even take a look at it to diagnose a problem. I remember once I ended up having to have a truck. Coincidentally, it's the same truck that's broke down now in, North, uh, in Salisbury, North Carolina. They had to put a transmission in there a couple years ago. It took them a month and a half to install a transmission. And this was a transmission that they had in stock. So my truck sat there a month and a half. I've had a transmission put in another Volvo here in Charlotte. Didn't even take a week. And they had to uh, get a part ship that get the transmission shipped there from jacksonville florida so the transit time of uh the transmission being shipped to charlotte and install time less than a week my truck was not there it wasn't there 10 days i only think my truck was there seven days i mean needless to say shearley volvo columbia south carolina i would not recommend them to my worst enemy i've had three instances three terrible instances with them then after that, matter of fact, the transmission that had to get put in the other truck was after I had the transmission put down in Shealy Volvo. And rather than deal with them again, the truck broke down in Aiken, South Carolina. Aiken, South Carolina was, uh, man, I don't even think it's 60 miles from Columbia. Rather than tow it to Columbia, I towed that sucker. We talking two and a half, three hours. We talking like 160, 70 miles back to Charlotte rather than deal with Shealy Volvo in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, Shealy Volvo in um, Duncan, South Carolina, they cool. I don't mind them. But Shealy in Columbia, South Carolina, forget them dudes. But anyway, back to my story. End up going to the Petro uh, down here in Columbia, getting them to put the belt on, pop the belt, you know, pop the hood. Dude has absolutely no idea how to install a freaking serpentine belt, you know, the alternator belt. He's like, well, do I need to take off the fan and the fan belt to get to it? I'm like, listen, man, I've had the belt replaced in this day cab and my other day cab before. They're built the exact same. Never once have I seen them take off the other belt to access the, you know, the pulley setup for the alternator belt. But I'm not a mechanic. Do what, you know, do you. So he's like, well... I don't really know how to do it, so <laughs> I'm away from some of my coworkers to get in. They'd be here at eight. I'm looking at my watch, like you know, it's like seven fifteen. I gotta sit here forty five minutes. It don't even take ten minutes to install this belt. I just don't, you know, I I can't do this shit myself with their tools. So needs to say the other guy come in, boom, boom, boom. They figure it out. They throw my belt on, create the truck up, alternate everything's working. But now my my joint is making this weird ass noise. It sound like a can with a screw in it and somebody shaking it up. Almost like a can of spray paint or something, but like 10 times louder. So I'm pissed. It's like, yo, when I started my truck this morning and my belt was intact, you know, hadn't popped, it wasn't making this noise. After the belt popped and I'm riding down the street, it wasn't making that noise. When I pulled in the head into this shop, it wasn't making this noise. Now that y'all done installed this belt, it's making these crazy noise. What the hell is that? So I spent another 30 minutes trying to figure it out. They telling me, hey, maybe your, uh, maybe your tension is bad. Nah, tension is not bad. I showed them my paperwork. I'm just like, man, I just got this tension to put on and this belt replaced. Um, you know, that tension is not even a year old. Uh, well, maybe your front cover's loose. I'm like, yo, I had to get the whole front side of this engine um, done a year and a half ago. That, I mean, you know, I doubt an uh, engine plate cover is going bad in a year and a half. I mean, I don't like Volvo, but, I mean, come on, a year and a half? That was like a fucking $5,000 job, you understand? Uh, well, I don't know. So I'm like, 
It's running. It's making this loud ass noise. I turn it off. We trying to figure it out. Can't figure it out. But what I do know is I'm not about to sit here at this T uh, this Petro and let them figure it out. I definitely ain't going because uh, the Volvo <laughs> was like two blocks away. Like it ain't even a full mile away. I'm like, I ain't going to them Sheely Volvo cats. I'm like, yo, don't even worry about it. Close my hood. Paid the little fifty dollars for them, you know, because it was like a half hour labor for them to install my my belt. Jump back in the truck. I had to go get my trailer from Pepsi because it was empty by this time. And uh, jumped on the highway, drove that joint back to Charlotte. You understand? By the time I get to Charlotte, I hear, I still hear the noise, but it's faint. So it's like, do I drop this off at my shop or go ahead and finish my day? Because I had another load to pick up to bring back to Columbia. Which is where I am now. Picked it, you know, went and got loaded. You know, everything's fine. My, everything's functioning normal. It's just this loud rattling noise. It literally sounds like it's a screw loose somewhere that I can't find. But I figured that the load I picked up, it was a hot load. It had to get here. So I'm here delivering it now, my second time here. And then I guess I'm just dropping this off in the shop tomorrow. I don't know. But... All you guys out here wanting to buy your own trucks, man, wanting to get in the game. Best advice I can give anybody. Make sure you got money set to the side for repairs. I don't care if you buy a 2019 truck. If you buy a 2001 truck. Trucks break down. From major to minor. Like right now, I got, I got one truck, my blue truck. Um, they call me, they say they put new batteries on it and it seems fine. Who knows? I won't know until I get back to Charlotte to test drive and check it out myself. But I got two trucks in need of repairs now. The one I'm sitting in that I got to drop off and the one that I dropped off on freaking Thursday. So just understand that you're trying to get in this owner-op game, whether you get your own authority, whether you lease on somewhere, nothing more important than putting money to the side for repairs. Period. I know everybody want to ball out because once you get to trucking, especially with your own authority, you technically getting paid every day. So a lot of people lose their mind. They go taking their lady on trips and popping tags. Just put money to the side for Uncle Sam and repairs because they will happen. It's inevitable, no matter how old or how new that truck is. But she got not your average trucker, man. Sitting here at this dock in Columbia, South Carolina. I don't know if it's mental or what, but now all of a sudden my back been hurting all day. I mean, I know I was involved in an accident and we was just sitting still in the parking lot. So, you know, but she got not your average trucker. Everybody out there, man, keep that hammer down. Stay safe. Be easy. Thanks for checking me out, man. Be sure to like, uh, subscribe, share. She got not your average trucker. Holler at me.